Hello students, so here is the first lab that we're going to do using the PASCO track and card system. The first lab is uh, studying motion in one dimension. And in this lab you need uh, the card. You can use either the red or the blue cards. And we're also going to have to use the capstone software which I assume you have already installed on your computer. Now, in order to do this, we need the PASCO uh, card to be raised up by about five degrees. And so what I'm using is, you can use a, a, a textbook or you can use these uh, packaging, you know, without the card in it, of course, put it under the feet on one side of the PASCO track system. So we can see that the angle indicator shows about four degrees. So that's the angle we need. Don't make it much higher than four to five degrees because then the cart will come down with a great speed and damage everything. All right, now that we have done that, let's go to the, uh, the cart. The cart, when you look at the cart, it has that's the card. It has a power switch on one side. And when you turn on that, you see the red light blinking here. Hope that's clear. Red light blinking here. That's the Bluetooth connection. Uh, it's looking for the capstone software to connect to that. I've not yet turned it on. So once I turn it on, you will see that it makes the connection. And when we actually do the lab, what we're going to do is gently place this on one side, on the other side of the track and let it go. And it's going to go hit the other side and see on the end stopper side, I have put some uh, packaging stuff so it doesn't ram into the hard end stopper so please do that you know put some sponge or something that softens the blow you got to do that to go to where i have installed the software the pasco capstone software it's right here uh, click on that and when it comes up with these options of uh, buying the key or entering the key don't do any of those just close it because we are using a trial version of the software and that's all we need. And then the cart itself has a power button there. It says power there. So turn that on and you will see the red light on the Bluetooth symbol blinking. That means it's trying to make a connection. So Go to the hardware setup right here and now it says searching for wireless devices and it's found that there's a smart card blue one. Click on that, left click on that and it says connecting to smart card. So now the connection is already made. Now the, the card has four inbuilt sensors in it. Now for this lab we only need the position sensor. So using the toggle switches, we will turn off the force sensor, the acceleration sensor, and the gyro sensor. After you have turned off all of those three, make sure that you have the position sensor on. Click back on the hardware setup to hide it. All right, gently place the cart down. I need to do one more thing. I need to set up a graph remember the graph can be either you know you see the graph icon here you can left click and drag it or easier still left click on the sensor data left click on the sensor data and you have the first graph position on the y-axis and time on the x-axis showing up that's what we need and you also see the record button at the lower left. Uh, make sure it's not grayed out. 
because if it's grayed out, that means there is no Bluetooth, Bluetooth connection. So make sure it's not grayed out and the way we do the lab is place the cord at one end, of course the raised end, click on the rocket button and then let go and stop. Once it hits or just before it hits, try to stop. That's it. We got our graph. Now, once you have this position time graph, we got to go to the work workbook and open the new page. And uh, now once you have the new page, we can pull the next graph onto this by going to the right side where it says graph, left click and drag. And on the X axis, left click, go to the X axis, left click and select time. And on the Y axis, again, left click and select velocity. That is how we get the velocity time graph from the previous run. Try to use as many data points as possible. So click and drag to get as many data points as possible. And after that, you after you've done that, we got to find the slope. We can find the slope using the linear fit. So you have this here. So you see that you can left click and it gets highlighted. And then you have this drop down arrow or menu. Make sure that you have the linear fit, uh, a check mark on the linear fit. So if that check mark is not there, you don't see anything. So make sure you have the check mark on the linear fit and you see the slope of the graph. You also see the regression, which if more than 0 0.95 shows that it's a good one. It indicates how good the data fits the equation. So here I have 1.00, which means it's perfect. That is how you find the slope. Once you get the slope, you know that the slope is the acceleration. The slope of the velocity time graph is the acceleration. Knowing the acceleration, we can calculate the value of g by using the equation number 4 on the lab document, which is acceleration is g sine theta. So use acceleration is equal to g sine theta. We know the value of theta, which is the angle of the incline. Manipulate that equation and find g, which should be close to 9.8 meter per second squared. So that's how we do that. You can go back to the previous graph, which is the position time graph, by left clicking on page one. Remember that was on page one. And we have to highlight this graph again. Click on this, get that box and, you know, try to get some data points. And then you go to the fit again, but this time instead of linear fit, we're going to use quadratic fit. Because if you remember, the, the equation for position is v naught t plus one half a t squared. So you see, that it's one half times the acceleration. So in your lab document, you would see the quadratic equation, which is a t squared plus b t plus c. Left click on that and you get the value of A. Now, caps A in this case uh, gives you half the value of acceleration. So in order to get the acceleration, you got to multiply it with 2. So in my case, I have 0 0.311, 0 0.311, which if I multiply by 2, gives me 0 0.622. And once I've got that, once again, I can find the value of G just by dividing the acceleration by sine of the angle. In my case, the angle was 4 degrees, so I get 8.9 
meter per second squared which is not very close to uh, 9.8 I know but remember that the RMSE stands for root mean square error and try to move this box in such a way that you get the smallest value for that you know so see this this is 1.22 times 10 to the negative 4 but this one is 9.7 times 10 to the negative 5 so try to find out the precise position where the root mean square error is the lowest that's how we that's how you find out the acceleration uh, from this graph and pick velocity but remember we need the square of velocity so how are we going to get it so again left click on that and you would see quick calc stands for quick calculations so pick the square of the velocity on that so now on the x on the y axis we have the square of the velocity and on the x axis we have the position and this is supposed to be a straight line and uh, again highlight uh, try to have maximum data points on the straight line part and go back to the linear fit now so the linear fit gives you the slope and because of the equation uh, do you remember the kinematic equation which is v final squared is equal to v initial squared plus 2a delta x 2a so the slope is actually going to give us twice the acceleration so in this case i have 1.21 as the slope so 1.21 divided by 2 will give me the acceleration so whatever is the slope take half of that and once you get that do the same divide by sine of uh, 4 and I get 8.67 as the acceleration due to gravity so that's how we verify if these three kinematic equations are correct now that's how you do this first slab motion in one dimension and remember that you got to do four runs and attach three graphs and in each graph you must show the curves and the curve fits so three graphs and each graph will have the four curves each also attach pictures of the setup if you include a video of you doing the lab a short video of where you uh, show the cart being placed and it rolling down you will get extra credit of five points so remember that now sample data is given on the uh, lab but remember that the angle and the masses are not correct so that you don't copy the data it's just given as a guide uh, but since I've already explained in detail how to do this lab that you must not have any difficulties whatsoever thank you and we'll see you on the next lab video